as Jason said, my name is Leah. I'm the Vice President of Strategic Development at Kalpura. And what have I, I have spent the past year doing is thinking about everything and anything related to video and education. I have a couple of goals today as we uh, dig in. First, I will hoping that by the end of this webinar, you'll have a sense of what the future is of media and education, what are the primary ways in which people are going to use media. Two, I want you to get a sense of why it is that there's a need for a platform like Kalpura and why it is that you have hundreds of developers and companies like Intel Capital investing in this company to try and solve some of the challenges around video and education. And three, I want you to have some concrete ideas about how you could address some of the video use cases on campus. I'm going to be showing you a couple of different tools. Aaron's going to be showing you video as integrated into Sky. And in addition to kind of the big think ideas here, my hope is that at the end of this conversation, you'll at least get started in understanding some very practical ways in which you can either dip your toe into media on campus, solve some current challenges, or put in place a roadmap for the future. So with that said, I just want to, and Jason, can you confirm that everyone can hear me? OK, sounds good. Um, so with that said, I just want to give you a little bit of background on Kaltura so you know who it is um, that's speaking to you today. Kaltura is the first and only open source media platform on the web. We started out very focused around video and quickly realized that video is not a standalone object. People also want management of audio and document and some other tools. We focus in four main verticals. Um, we do a tremendous amount of work in media and entertainment with people like Fox Video and Disney. Um, we do a lot of work in enterprise with people like Bank of America and Best Buy. Obviously, education is our topic today, and there's an entire product team focused on education. And then a lot of work with telcos as well. And the reason why I mention this is that education in many ways is advanced in some areas and behind in some areas. We're advanced in really thinking about media as integrated into other software. So the majority of educational technology today does not provide support for media. But we're behind in that, you know, whereas YouTube grew up 10 years ago and people like Fox and Hulu were all um, streaming media on the web. In education, this is kind of a newer idea. But so the exciting thing about Kalpura is that means we're able to take the innovation, the advancements, and the product demands that come from both the enterprise space and the media space. Hey, Leah, I hate to interrupt you. I just had a few comments that you're a little bit hard to hear, especially over the uh, um, over Adobe Connect. I don't know if there's a way to speak more clearly into your microphone or anything along those lines. Sure. Sorry. Uh, is this any better? I'll ask the group. So you go ahead, and I'll, I'll ask the folks that were having some issues. Okay. Okay. Please let me know. Please let me know. Okay. okay. So just to give you a little bit of background on the solution, um, the Kaltura services are offered both as a software as a service solution and on prem. Um, for the software as a service solution, we provide content delivery network. We partner with the leading CDNs, and we have two fully redundant data centers on the east and the west coast. We find that 80% of clients are using. Um, Kaltura is software and service, so we do have a growing number of educational clients who want the entire instance to sit on premise. Um, our vision in this world is essentially be to media on the web what MySQL is to databases. Our feeling is that on the web today there is a fundamental missing layer, and that is tools that are open, accessible, integratable, that allow people to publish media. And this is this niche that Kaltura is trying to address. What does that mean for video in education? And, Je and Jason, can, can you hear me any better now? OK, great. Just let me know. So what does it mean for video in education? What are the areas where people are wanting to use media? Well, we think of video in education as encompassing sort of a 360 degree story. Um, Often, we, when people engage Kaltura, it's people from the central IT team, or it's a video or media services or strategy team. But when we ask them, what are your use cases, how are you looking to use video today, the places where they articulate value or they articulate a need for integration are all over. So we have people coming from campus marketing and media teams, and they say, you know, we spend a tremendous amount of money on recruitment and retention campaigns. We'd like to be able to incorporate video into our colleague websites, and we'd like to be able to engage the community more. We have people who are looking to do live events, commencements, um, conferences on campus, and they want to use Kaltura for that. 
Other people want to use Kaltura for teaching and learning. Specifically, they're interested in engaging students. They realize that the students in school today is the, the YouTube generation. It's not enough to just send them to an empty learning portal. We need to have engaging content. We need to allow them to do video assignments. We need that students and teachers to be able to create media. So they come to Kaltura looking for tools for video for learning. Other people come to us and they say, you know, what we want is a campus YouTube. We want a private environment which will give us YouTube-like tools, but we don't want to share our content. We're concerned about copyright. We're concerned about privacy. We want to keep everything internal. So these are some of the different use cases that people are kind of the, both the areas of needs and the area where people are trying to drive value with video. And what we've done at Kaltura is tried to architect a solution um, which fits all of these different use cases. I can tell you one of the exciting things, and I'm just putting, putting up here this, the screen of sample customers. One of the exciting things about this solution is that because it's open source, we didn't just uh, develop solutions for all of those different use cases on our own. Here you can see a number of um, Kaltura clients and partners. And what we've done is we work with people like Unicon and partners like UVA and Yale to actually build out applications to serve those different use cases. And I'm going to show you some of those today. Um, so, you know, for those of you who haven't heard about Kaltura before and want to understand, you know, why it is that everyone's talking about this technology, why it is that everyone's talking about media, and why it is that we're so focused in education, I would just say there's four or five key reasons. One is the open source innovation model. It's been incredibly exciting to be taking a new technology into the education space at a time when people are just starting to think about new ways to use media. And what we've seen is the development of a collaborative community, each building off of this. The second thing is that rather than coming in with a box, a single server, or a single uh, portal, which is expected to serve all campus media names, we've, create, we've taken an approach where we have a core platform and then dedicated on applications on top to serve different needs, which is a very, very different approach than what you see traditionally from companies like Apple or Cisco. Um, or even the video companies who are trying to address the space. Um, third, what we've done is created a very dis made a distinct decision along with our clients to to manage not only video but also forms other forms of rich media, realizing that the two go hand in hand. And three, you've just seen a tremendous amount of investment in it. The reason why we partner with people like Unicon is that very quickly we wanted to have others bring in the domain expertise from education so that we could build our products for this community. So the reason why I'm saying this now before we go into demos is that my hope is that you will join the Kaltura community, that whether you're interested in media on campus, whether you're a technologist, whether you're a teacher, that you'll join this community and help us together craft um, the future of, of digital media. Now let me get a little concrete. I want to explain to you um, what the Kaltura solution is and specifically what the cross-campus media suite is. Well, I explained to you before that what Kaltura did is create a core platform with dedicated applications. This is a high-level diagram of the Kaltura suite. First, if you look at the core platform, the core platform basically does the heavy lifting of video. It does the hosting, the streaming, the transcoding of media into multiple formats. Some people have real files, some people have splash files. You want to upload them into a platform that will then allow for a delivery and display on the desktop or on mo mobile devices. The basic functions of managing media are all powered by the core. On top of the core, we have what's called the Kaltura Management Console. This is the portal that I'm going to show you, you shortly, but this is the main place where people go in to actually manage their media. Many schools using Kaltura just stop there. Um, they just need a simple management environment that allows for managing transcoding, publishing videos, grabbing embed codes. On top of this, though, we've also created specific applications to serve dedicated use cases. So what I'm going to show you today um, is Kaltura Media Space, a application that was created specifically to serve this use case around a kind of YouTube collaborative media environment on campus. Aaron's going to show you the learning management extension for Sakai. We also have extensions for every other LMS on the market, and we've created those with each of the LMS communities. We have a whole variety of content management system extensions. So whether you're using Drupal or WordPress or Joomla or other CMSs on campus, we can give you full access to all of our APIs or our existing application integration kits so that you can use video seamlessly. And then on top, there's a whole set of advanced features that 
over time have been created for some clients. Some of these have been productized, others haven't. Um, but when when clients sign up for, for Palpura, when they use our open source code, they think of picking the core, selecting which applications they want, and then selecting additional advanced features like description, speech to text, um, 508 compliant players, live streaming. Those are some of the what we've done, you know, originally we went, went started going from campus to campus and we were just collaboratively building some of these applications. And what we realized is that as opposed to sort of doing custom integrations for each campus, what we realized is that between the LMS integrations, the CMS integrations, and the core, we had essentially defined what we're calling a, a cross-campus media suite, a set of tools that would fit 75% of the use cases for media on campus, plus a set of additional APIs that could allow those who, whose needs weren't met with those applications to extend Kaltura um, into other environments. So what we've taken to market today is indeed called the Kaltura Cross Campus Media Suite. Um, this is what I would say 50% of Kaltura clients are using. Um, they, it includes the core platform and the management console, either hosted or self-hosted. A learning management extension for one of the LMSs on campus, Kaltura Media Space, which is the destination site I'm going to show you now, plus a content management system extension. And then some people pick various add-ons depending on what their needs are. So I'm going to show you two, two products um, briefly today. I'm going to show you the Kaltura Management Console, which is the primary administrative environment. This is where Uploading and importing of content takes place. This is where all the security controls are managed. This is where our player design is managed. And then I'm also going to show you uh, Kaltura Media Space. Before I do that, I just want to sort of share with everyone a couple different case studies so that this becomes kind of a bit more practical and you see what other schools have done with Kaltura. Um, just to show you a couple of case study examples. Um, one, one major Kaltura client is MIT. Um, MIT has created a site called Tech TV. What they did is take their our Kaltura Ruby on Rails client library, and they actually built a custom site which inspired, um, was an inspiration for media space. But you can see what they've done is they've integrated Kaltura, um, integrated the specific features around embedding, sharing, um, Expose all of the metadata and what Tech TV is in the end is essentially a video sharing site for the MIT campus. Um, individuals can log in, create an account, they can share media privately, they can share media publicly. MIT has integrated um, closed captions and subtitles. The entire site plays both on the desktop and on mobile. And if you're interested um, in learning more about this as a kind of a sample integration work, um, Here's another example. Um, this is Columbia Business School. Again, obviously one of the leading business schools in the US, and they're using Kaltura to power their public-facing campus websites. Um, you know, these sites are designed to power better public communications, recruitment, marketing. And what they did is they actually took the Kaltura Drupal module, and then they used our APIs to do an elegant integration of Kaltura. When you see this site live, you can actually click on these students um, and their profiles, and then you can listen to them speak. They are now about to add HTML5 video and allow for playback on mobile devices as well. And finally, we come to the campus, the clients, uh, the university clients that Unicon has been most closely involved in, specifically UVA, Yale, and NYU. And these are the clients have really sort of helped develop and, and then adopted the cross-campus video suite. Um, all of these clients have taken or are developing a learning management system extension, the Kaltura core, and then various content management system extensions. Yale is using the Drupal extension, MIT, I mean, sorry, uh, UVA and NYU. UVA is using Drupal as well. NYU is using an extension into Confluence. Um, at UVA, the focus was very much on empowering um, faculty and enabling them to use more technology in the classroom. In Yale, the sort of frame or focus is on the content of the of the project is on all internal video for learning and training. At NYU, the focus of that project is on creating an internal video repository, and they're also looking to do an integration with 
Facebook 360, um, their single sign-on systems, and then the other campus ones. So, so without further ado, I want to actually take you to see a couple live things. Um, the first thing I want to show you and give you a brief glimpse of is the Calcora Management Console. Um, this is a console you can sign up. You can you can do free trial of this if you go to calcora.com. Again, this is what I would call the kind of the radio hub or the admin center for Calpora. Um, at the dashboard, you can see some of the major features. The console allows you to upload content, allows you to grab players and embed them on your site, and allows you to custom design players as well. Just to take you through um, a workflow, and the other key things it has is um, analytics on all the videos. Just to take you through a basic workflow, um, I'm going to click here on the Jason, can you can you confirm that you can see my screen and there's no delay? Um, so just to take you through a basic workflow of uploading content, there's two major ways to upload content. One is through a CSV file. You can bulk upload content. The other th would be if you want to just upload a few pieces of um, individual pieces of file. Um, you could upload video, audio, or photo. We also are allowing for upload of documents and other other types of files in our next release. You can upload from the desktop, record directly from a webcam. A lot of people are using this feature for sort of video commenting and response. Um, or you can connect the uploader to a separate video repository. This one happens to be connected to MetaCafe, so I'll show you a basic workflow um, search cell there. So I just searched this repository for dog, and I'm going to select a file, click Next. Um, I can add titles, tags, categories. Um, all of this metadata can actually be fully custom, both the metadata categories and the structure of the metadata. We work very closely with UVA on building out the Kaltura system to have a fully customizable uh, metadata structure. Once I click Upload and Finish, this media is now in the back of Kaltura being transcoded um, into whatever formats I've selected. So you can see this, this media is now here. The status is it's uploading. Um, and it's in the process of um, being converted into a flash format that's playable on the web. For the files that are already uploaded, if the only thing I want to do is rapidly um, paste the file into another environment and allow for playback, I can just click Preview and Embed. And here I would have the option of grabbing an embed code for the player. And if I happen to have created many different types of players, be they different formats, different functions, I could pick which player in particular I wanted to use. Um, so imagine you are a media service administrator and your job is to upload and paste media into you know, Drupal sites or a campus website or your LMS. This would be a basic workflow that, that you would use. Just to kind of highlight a couple more things here, all this media can be categorized. The folder structure um, is, is fully configurable by you. You can filter the media by creation date, by media type, by transcoding status, by duration. Um, you can actually schedule this media um, so that you would specify when the media would go live on a site. So you, this could be a faux live event, or it could be in a class context where you want students to only be able to look at the video answers at a certain time. You can also set access controls. So one of the big projects of Ready and Kaltura for the education environment was enabling a whole set of security um, and authentication uh, tools that are built into this console in, and into the Kaltura core. A couple other things to highlight from here before we move on to media space. Um, one, you can create playlists. So if I am teaching biology or economics 101 um, and I want to have all content that's uploaded into this console, tags of economics, be shared. I can manually create a playlist and add content, or I can create what's called a rule-based playlist, um, which is which would be any kind of rule or search. So all content tagged with economics 101 uploaded between January and February, and that would fill that this um, 
this playlist. Um, and the reason why I mentioned this, this example in particular is that we see this used a lot in the lecture capture, capture context. Um, people are rolling out lecture capture systems, and one of the reasons, one of the things they quickly realize is that the lecture capture systems don't have rich media management tools. So they export the content into Kalpura, the video content, and then they set up playlists so that as new content is uploaded to Kalpura, it can be added to a playlist and automatically published. Yeah. Yes. Question from the group on whether or not what you're showing right now uh, is an admin or a general user interface. Sure, that's a great question. Um, so, so we, we see, see, we we see, see all, all this as, as an administrative interface. Um, we have had schools give this out to faculty, but we see the Kalpura Management Console as something that's run by admins. And what we do is we create user-facing tools like Kalpura Media Space and like the video integration to high for end user faculty and students. Um, so that, that, is, that is the answer. Um, just to finish off uh, briefly here before we move to some of those user-facing tools, here you can see the transcoding settings. Um, a lot of the heavy lifting around video has to do with transcoding the video into the right format. And here an administrator can manage all the different file formats that he or she wants um, the content to be transcoded into, whether it be for iPod or mobile delivery, for BlackBerry or for Android. You know, you'll see some of the complexities around video that we're trying to simplify with this environment. And the last thing to highlight here are detailed analytics. Um, I'm not going to take you through all of this, but you can see things like content drop-off, um, how much of any piece of content are students walk in, watching, how often are they watching it, minutes viewed, um, lots of interesting analytics that whether you're running kind of a marketing campaign or using this for teaching is really important to allow for improve, improvement of the content that you're putting out. Into really so if you have any other questions about um, Calpora Management Console, I'm happy to answer, and you can just pop those into Adobe Connect and Jason will feed them out. Um, now I want to take you over to Calpora Media Space, and I'll just go back to the slide because I think it, it simplifies things a little bit. Um, media Space is essentially what we think of as the user, a user-facing media environment. It's a configurable destination website that can be used in a number of different ways. Um, it can be used as a portal for students and teachers to upload content that would be used for a learning environment. It can be used as a kind of social collaboration site on campus, a YouTube-like environment. Or we also see this being used, media space, to, um, to uh, manage and display library collections on campus, to, um, to manage and um, allow, for fa allow faculty to grab lecture capture files. So, you know, people want a destination video portal that allows some level of roles and permissions and different types of interactions. And so what this site is built to be is sort of an incredibly configurable site that can be built out with different roles and permissions depending on what the specific is that real quick, a question on Media Space on whether or not you can use Kaltura Media Space with the community edition of Kaltura. Sure. Um, so Media Space is actually a commercial product. So it's not provided um, for free with the open source community. It might, might one day. Um, so right now we sell um, Kaltura Media Space under a license that comes with setup and, and support. And the reason we do, we do that is just it's, it's taken a long while to sort of perfect and advance this product. And we found that at least at this phase in this development, it's better to keep it in-house and work with each individual school that wants to use it. In the future, I could imagine releasing a kind of media space version um, with the Kalpura community once. Uh, right. um, so just to give you a quick view of media space, and again, this is all on a public demo site that the Unicon folks can share with you. Um, the exciting thing about media space is that this entire structure is created through the Kalpura management console. So these folders, would essentially be the folders that you set up in um, in the KMC. So whatever folder structure and subfolder structure you set up, this is what's mirrored in Media Space. So it doesn't. None of this is kind of hard coded at a at a um, code level. It's all it's all a dynamic site. 
intended to be managed not by developers but by campus media administrators. Um, when you mouse over these various thumbnails, you can see a description of the content. Um, for each individual content, you can um, provide various details and metadata categories. If you enable it, you can allow people to actually grab an embed code and select a player. So a lot of times we see, um, you know, I'll give you an example, Rutgers, for example, is using this to distribute lecture capture files and other media to faculty, and they allow faculty to sign in um, with a specific role, grab an embed code, and then paste that media where they might. The other thing you can do is allow people to add the content to a playlist. They can create or manage playlists. And then you can also have different types of featured media here as well. Um, the media space social edition, to the extent that you want to use it, less as a kind of video destination site and more as a um, as a kind of YouTube-like environment for students or faculty to upload, also has what's called a My Media section. And this is where I, as an end user, would upload media. Um, there's also an area called My Playlist, where I could manage playlists. So imagine this is kind of a library, an archive of course media. I, as a user, could have an account on here and I could create a playlist of the films that I want to share with other people in my class or that I want to um, watch when I need to do additional studying. So, you know, to the person who actually asked, was the other site intended for administrators or end users, you know, the answer was that we think of KMC as the administrative place and media space. While some people think of it as an internal campus YouTube, other people think of it as an out-of-the-box video destination site. Other people actually think of Alpharma Media Space as a user-facing uh, media management environment and use it. Um, so I hope that is a hopeful, uh, helpful introduction to Kaltura and the cross-campus suite. Um, again, these are just two of the applications that are powered off of the core. I'm just going to pass now to Aaron Sikowski to show you what the Kaltura Sakai application looks like. And now you're going to be able to see what Kaltura looks like as, as fully integrated, integrated into a learning management uh, system. One question, Leah, um, that came through. Um, does the video up, uploaded through media space by end users appear in the Kaltura media console as well? Absolutely. So, so everything that's uploaded, uploaded in media space or Sakai or through the APIs shows up in the management console. This is the kind of operations hub. And that's why if you, if you look back at this sort of original diagram um, I showed here in the beginning, um, I showed Kaltura Management Console actually two places. Because some people use KMC as the primary kind of product that they're providing to people on campus and they hand it out to different departments. And then people think of the Management Console as just an administrative hub that sits behind the other applications. Um, so I will be on chat, folks, if you want to um, type in any questions, and I'm happy to answer as we Great. Thanks a lot, Leah. Um, so Aaron, hopefully you're, uh, you're still on the line and are able to, uh, to go on to your area. Just so you know, that Unicon, as has been mentioned a couple times, recently worked with uh, University of Virginia, Yale, and others around the Sakai integration uh, with Kaltura. Aaron Zakowski was the lead developer on these projects, and so he's going to demonstrate some of that functionality now. Um, is, is my mic working, sort of? Can people hear me? Okay, great, perfect. Um, all right. <clears throat> Sorry, so uh, I'm Aaron Zakowski. I'm the uh, technical lead for the Sakai Kaltura integration. And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate, hopefully, uh, assuming that everyone can see my screen, I'm going to demonstrate just a few things um, a little bit briefly uh, related to how that integration can work, how it can be used, and just sort of demo it a little bit, basically. So I'm going to talk you through this. Uh, and we're going to start out by just sort of looking at how this might look in the wild. Now, granted, this is uh, sort of a, a bit of a prepared site, so um, not exactly a live course or anything, but this will give you a sense of what Sakai itself might look like with Kaltura integrated. 
Um, in this example here, I have a Biology 101 course that I hope is visible. And just uh, before I jump into that, I want to briefly mention again, this is the Sakai test drive um, that Unicon offers. Uh, the access to this is free for anyone who wants to go and sign up. So if, if you're interested in this integration or interested in Sakai in general and want to experiment with it, uh, feel free to go to test drive sakai.com and uh, sign up for an account you're you're welcome to try out any of the various tools in sakai and especially this kaltura integration so the kaltura integration in this biology course is the kaltura media gallery i'm going to just show you briefly what that looks like uh, a couple of things terminology wise that i want to establish right off the uh, right off sort of the, the start here <clears throat> first of all there are collections within the sakai integration uh, the collections you can sort of think of as a way of sort of Managing the media. Um, they could be called things like week one, week two. They could be focused on a topic. Uh, they could be focused um, uh, sort of in images versus videos. It's really sort of up to the instructor or the person who's controlling the course, the instructional designer, to decide how they want to uh, build their course. So in this example, I'll, I'll sort of show you a couple of the, the actual collections that we formed. And I'll talk just a little bit about the different kinds of collections because there are some additional um, types which can allow you to do things that may or may not be immediate obvious. So the first thing I want to show is uh, this collection of biology images. Now, I'm sort of viewing this course essentially from the perspective of a student right now. And in this example, what I'm looking at, uh, which I, I'm going to go a little bit slow just to give the screen time to catch up. Um, in this example, I've got a collection of various images related to biology. This is my Biology 101 course. You can see that it's possible for the instructor to share various kinds of media uh, with the students, not just video. So I want to make sure that you know, it, this is a media application, not just video, video, audio, images, etc. So in this case, I've created sort of a nice... Ah, um, um, Sorry, is there uh, an issue with the voice? Is it not coming through? Should I speak a yeah, little bit? Yeah, it's a little bit choppy right now. Um, I think it just could be where your location. Um, keep going forward, and if it continues to be bad, let me know. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll, I'll just speak a little bit slower, and hopefully that will <laughs> that'll sort of cover over any issues with the uh, speed of the connection. <clears throat> so, sorry about that, everyone. Uh, th this example with the biology images, things like that, again, the idea here is specifically that we want to give the instructor the ability to sort of build the course the way they want to. In this case, it's a, it's a collection which is managed by the instructor. So what I want to demonstrate in a minute is I'll show you how to create those different types of collections and sort of what it might look like when you're starting off brand new. So again, it's just an example sort of pre-filled with content. So let me go over to the actual other collection we have here as a sample, one that has something maybe potentially a little bit more interesting. The biology video sample actually has some video content in it. And again, I'll scroll slowly to avoid, uh, to allow everything to catch up. And you can see here that we have uh, a video, just an example, a sample video, and there could be many sample videos, obviously, in a course. But in this case, um, this, this video, Video shows a little bit about uh, antibody immune response. That's not really terribly important. The key is, is that we have this ability to sort of manage a collection of media from the instructor's perspective. So let me show you where those video, those um, uh, yeah, yeah, it might just be the audio over um, Adobe Connect. So again, apologies for that. Um, <clears throat> so let me pop over into the uh, into the site library for just a minute to show you where the content came from. So the site library, you can sort of think of as your pool of all content related to the site. The collections themselves are sort of isolated. They're my way of, of grouping things into categories, putting things into groups, collections, as it were. So here's my site library, which shows all of the content related to this specific course. Um, with the Sakai Caltech integration, we've done everything sort of on a site basis, very much like Sakai is built typically. Uh, content is sort of within a site, and by site I mean a course also. So let me, you know, it could be a project, it could be a course. So I'm using sort of the general terminology, but but you know that that sort of idea of a group of students or a group of learners or a group of peers working together that that is 
site. And within that site, we have this library of content, that site library. So the site library can be used to build uh, a collection or build multiple collections. In this case, we can search, we can filter, so I can say, just show me the videos, just show me audio, for example. And you can see that I can sort of easily search and find things. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to choose a search topic, which actually is has joined the So you'll see I can search by cells. I can just get the content related to cells. Um, it, you know, again, there's sort of just the kind of tools that you might expect to find. So that's sort of the general layout, the general kind of use case that you might see of building your site with content. Now what I want to do is walk through a little bit of what it might look like to build that content. I'm going to do this fairly quickly, but um, that's all right. I'll just try not to uh, lose one as I go. So in the media gallery itself, when you first um, connect, and yes, you can upload upload videos. I'll show that in just a second. Uh, when you first go into to a Sakai system, uh, which is brand new, and you look at your media gallery, it's going to be empty like this. So there's going to be a series of instructions. Help the instructor get oriented to let them know what is a media collection for, why, why is uh, there a site library, what are these Someone things about. Joined the conference. So essentially a summary of what I just mentioned, but written here in text. So what I'm going to do to start out is go into the site library and upload a little bit of content just to demonstrate what that looks like. So there's this uploading media here or here. There's two links for it. And we'll give the tool just a second to load. Well, that's loading, I mentioned that um, the, this uploader is the same uploader that your users will see in any counter application. So this is going to look very similar to what uh, Leah just showed us because it is, again, that Caltra upload. Um, it's taking just a second to load. There we go. So it should look quite familiar. The one thing that's slightly different in Sakai compared to potentially other uploaders, again, remember, uploaders can be configured. Um, is in this we have the webcam example, just like you saw before, but we also have this my content. And my content in this circumstance is all the content I uploaded as a user. So um, let me pull my photo content instead, uh, which include photos or audio or any kind of uh, various content. So I'll just choose my, my uh, and of Dr. Pepper as an example to show how that can be uploaded. I'm going to jump through these steps because you already saw this same kind of thing from Leah, so there's no need to go into a lot of detail on how that itself works. Um, essentially, the key thing is that, that I can easily sort of transfer stuff into Kai just in the same way that someone may have uploaded into uh, Drupal or WordPress or any of the other applications integrated with Kaltura. And this content can go into the Kaltura Media Center uh, Management Console, I'm sorry, just like uh, any other content might. And it's now associated with my user account and with my course. So I have sort of a, a dual association with that content. Um, the one thing that we have right now is, well, you're building your content. It's marked as private. So there are some permissions handling within Sakai, which I'll mention just very briefly. Uh, essentially, while you are managing your content, it starts off as private. Uh, you can make it public depending on who you are. So if I'm an instructor, for example, I will often have permissions. And this can be configured on a, on a per installation basis. Um, but normal, normal permissions would be that as an instructor, I can make things public or private. I can, in other words, show them to students or hide them from students. So in this case, I'll make my Dr. Pepper can picture public, and so we can see that. Um, I can also uh, put, you know, make it private while I'm working on it. If I don't want anyone else to see it yet, I can keep it sort of hidden. The other thing I mentioned for the collections, uh, and there being different types, let me briefly cover that. So you can see I still don't have any collections to show anyone any, any interesting yet. So I'll do a collection like this, soda. And you'll see these different choices here, which I hope are showing up. Um, sometimes pull-down menus don't, don't show up on things like this, but I hope this is visible. I have, can make an instructor collection, which means a collection that I can manage, a community collection, which is a collection that everybody in the site can manage. So in other words, community manage, not just uh, not just me being able to add content and control the content within that collection, but everybody, of course, can work together to have a collection which is sort of um, sort of group controlled. 
uh, a personal collection, where which is a collection where I can manage the content within it and work with other people, but my content is safe. And, um, it's under my control only. Or an owner collection, which is essentially private, uh, a collection where I can put things into it, but no one else can really see it or do anything with that collection unless I want them to. So in this case, I'll do the default as the instructor collection. It's sort of the basic use case where I, as an instructor, control that content. Students can see it, but they can't change it. So I make my instructor collection. Um, and then I'm going to add some media to that collection. It's fairly straightforward. So I'll go in here. I'll select my plate, pick out the soda can, select done. And now I've built my collection. So, so this is sort of the, the basic process for getting set up. And if I go back now to my main, my main page of the media gallery, see that I have my nice soda collection. Um, the thing I can do, which I, which is just a part of the integration with Sakai, so beyond just being able to build collections and upload content, um, it's also possible for me to use that content in other parts of Sakai. So if I'm in the announcements tool, you can see that I can say new soda announcement here, and select the Kaltura icon. And I can see anything that I've uploaded and have access to. Now it's going to vary from person to person, but in my circumstance, I have access to this soda can image. So I can embed that soda can image and then add my announcement. So if I preview the announcement, you'll see that I have this image of soda can. So this is again, sort of videos, audio, images. It really doesn't matter what kind of media. I can embed that media in various aspects aspects of Sakai. So that would, could be, for example, the media gallery, I'm um, sorry, the announcements, the assignments, tests and quizzes, a any part of Sakai that uses rich text can use the media, which I've now got access to through Kaltura. And I'm running just a slight bit over, but are there any questions or should, I, should we go to the general question handling session, Jason? Um, I think that we have to answer a couple of them online right now. Um, one thing that we didn't show, and I know is something that's pretty interesting and may not be possible within the, the constraints of this environment, but um, when adding a video, uh, the ability to uh, actually edit that video with an editor from Kaltura is running from Sakai as well as something that I, I, I found quite interesting um, when I was, was playing with the tool as well. Maybe you could talk just a few seconds on that. Um, yeah, no, no, I, that's, that's a good. Uh... And to, to show that. <clears throat> I'm not sure if my screen is going to update quickly enough to, to show that. So, but, but as, um, as Jane was mentioning previously, it's possible to go in uh, to act access various Kaltura tools beyond just the player and the uploader, but also the uh, media editor, which is um, known as the remixer. So for those of you who already are familiar with Kaltura terminology, um, you can use the media remixer to actually go and edit your content directly inside of, of Sakai itself. And this is also part of the permission structure, which I didn't get a chance to go into a lot of detail about, but the permissions are fairly fine grained, so you can control whether or not students, instructors, et cetera, are allowed to remix the content that you make available to them. Do you want them to have the ability to edit those videos and audio and whatever? And you know, you have that level of control to determine that. In this circumstance, I have access to it. And it's taking just a second to load the editor, but I think it should be visible now. Uh, and for those of you who haven't seen the editor before, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna actually edit this video, but just showing you, just to show you that it is actually possible to go in and, and take a video like this, you know, the, the cells, for example, and edit or adjust it. Um, did you want me to show anything else about the editor, Jason? I think that just gives people uh, just a little bit of yeah. it. Definitely be pleased if we encourage you to come into the Sakai test drive and actually try this out. You can you can come in and edit these videos, or edit your own videos, sorry, not our please, but, <laughs> but you can edit your own videos um, and try this out yourselves. You know, I think that's right, Aaron. Um, there was a question about whether or not we could be constrained actual video editing capabilities. I don't really have time for that. 
today. Um, but as Aaron mentioned, uh, certainly go out and grab an account on the Kite Test Drive. You can go and you can actually play with the video editor. Um, and if it's something that you want uh, some additional uh, information on, certainly let us know. And we can set up something uh, kind of one-on-one -on -one, uh, to walk through those capabilities with you. Um, as far as any other questions, I believe, I believe it's been kind of keeping up with everybody uh, yeah. on there. What are the last yeah. Last one was, can you upload Flash Animation on the account for Media Council? It's a Kai, and some editors might rely on XML documents that need to be uploaded along with Flash Animation. Uh, I don't know, Leah, yeah, if that's something that you can answer or Aaron can answer, I could probably uh, review the question real well. Um, sure. So, um, right now, so, out of the box, you can um, upload. Right now, out of the box, you can upload. Sort of Flash Animations with XML. We've had people do this as custom work with a part of the software. So for example, there's a campaign integration going on right now that involves um, use of sort of complex files plus other type of data that comes in through an XML. It's not built into Sakai. This is the type of thing where um, if you were to become a, a client and engage Uticon, Uticon could sort of work you to scope that, that sort of flow. Um, but it has, has other complexities. We, we are continuously building out Kaltura to be able to support um, other types of complex rich media files, but it's just a matter of kind of responding to kind of demand in the particular files that people are needing first, so we're going one by one. Um, but it would definitely be interesting to kind of get your input and understand more about the source of those files and what you're trying to achieve, and Unicon could super help on that. Thanks, Leah. Uh, yeah. Another question uh, was around, can, can the Sakai collections uh, be imported into the new sites each semester? And Aaron, maybe that's a question that you can answer. Uh, can the collections be imported each semester? Is that, are you basically asking um, if, for example, you created those collections in one term and you wanted to move that content from that term to the next term? Is that, is that the question, in my understanding? Name it correctly. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the, but it sort of depends on on your in general. Um, right now, we don't have any specific way of sort of moving the collections themselves. Now, the media obviously definitely would move. Um, it, it doesn't go away, right? So the media certainly is lost from one, one term to the next. Um, the collections themselves, unless unless you are sort of reusing that course, uh, in other words, flushing the students out and that kind of thing, reusing the course, they wouldn't actually move from one term to another without some sort of manual intervention right now. Uh, but that's definitely a, sounds like a reasonable feature request that I think we would, uh, we would entertain as something that could be added to the, to the plug. Great, thanks. Thanks, Aaron. Uh, another question, uh, is this kind of guy using the Kaltura V3 API. I don't know if that's an answer or Leah. I think that's an error. Do you know, Aaron? I assume it's V3, the latest APIs that you were off of. Yes. I'm sorry. Sorry, I couldn't find my mute for a second after I turned off the screen share. I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah, it, it should be version 3 of the API. That's what that should be called. Great. Um, Lisa, do we have any other questions that I missed in the, in the room at this point that you saw? No? Um, so at this point, we'll open it up. If there's any other general questions, we've got about five more minutes. I'm uh, happy to stay on. If anybody has any other questions and wants to, to pop it in there, give people a few seconds to think about it, contemplate. But it has other complexities. We are All right, well, uh, I'll play it up. Oh, we've got somebody who's typing. Um, but uh, as, as folks drop off um, over the next five minutes, I really just wanted to, to thank you for your time today. Um, if you have any other questions that uh, we were not able to answer on, on this or you have areas of concern or um, areas of demonstration you want to see more, uh, please let us know. Uh, my email address is jlacy at unicon.net. Um, I'd be happy to uh, give you a call or set you up with uh, some additional information. Um, you'll get a, you will get a follow-up email from, from Unicon after this call, um, which I will have a little bit more information around what you've seen today. Um, but absolutely let us know if you've got anything, any other needs um, that we can help you with. Um, so I think that's it. I haven't seen any other questions that come through. I appreciate your time, everybody.
and uh, and good luck. We'll talk to you soon.